Hi guys, welcome to another edition of Gold Bazan. Today, myself and Bob at Gold Reese will be doing an interview with Daniel Carbosion. Daniel is a former Iranian-American footballer that played for English sides such as Arsenal, Ipswich Town, and Burnley. He's been scouting for Arsenal FC in the North American regions for the past eight years, and I hope you guys enjoy this. <laughs> Yeah, welcome guys to another edition of Gold with Zen. Now we're joined by Danny, Carvacion, and Bobak Goldries. How you guys doing today? Good, man. How's it going? Very well. How you doing, Bobak? Yeah, thanks, Pasha. Thanks, Pasha. We're, we're very excited to have Danny with us and uh, to get a little bit of an insight into his past, his uh, current plans, and how it all ties up to him being partly Iranian. Yeah. Danny, once again, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, first off the bat, I just want to go back to talking about your career. Um, how did you end up, first of all, playing for Arsenal? And and also the second question that I've tied back into this, what was your time like playing for an Arsenal player alongside players such as Thierry Andre, Dennis Bergkamp, and even Cesc Fabregas, for example? Yeah, it was good, man. I, um, I was actually, I was seen, um, I guess Adidas used to hold a camp in the United States called uh, the Elite Soccer Program shortened to ESP, and ESP was basically the um, the one way you would get seen uh, to go to play college soccer. Like, that was, like, the thing you wanted to get invited to, and Adidas would invite, I believe, like, 150 high school kids from freshmen to rising seniors um, to a, to a week-long camp, basically. They gave you, like, an amazing amount of stuff. It was crazy, like, you know, when you're in high school, getting any sort of free stuff's awesome, and uh, this camp was ridiculous for that. Um, so, I actually, I was actually waitlisted for that camp. Uh, the year going into my senior year, and um, two two or three days before the camp started, they they actually called uh, called my house and asked me if I could come because somebody else had dropped out, and um, I said of course. It, was, it just happened to be in Wilmington, North Carolina, and I was I was born in Virginia, so my dad um, drove me down to Wilmington, which is like six or seven hours, I think. Um, dropped me off that weekend, and I ended up winning Golden Boot there. Um, I just did really really well that week, and uh, an Arsenal scout was. Actually, to make a long story short, our, our coach there, actually my coach at the camp, was a former Arsenal player, Paul Mariner, uh, as well as Bob McNabb, who was also a former Arsenal player. And they called Arsenal's chief scout, uh, Steve Rowley, about two days into the camp to come over and watch me. I mean, I had no idea this was going on. And uh, after the camp ended, they um, Arsenal called me, Steve called me, and asked me if I um, was up for coming over on a trial. Uh, I went over there for two weeks. Um, did well again, and they, they basically offered me a contract. Uh, it was I was going into my senior year in high school, so uh, and school was always very, very important for me. Um, so I, I kind of expressed that to them, and they, they were happy with me finishing my senior year of high school. And then I, um, I went over and signed basically right after I graduated high school. Preseason started July 7th, and I, I flew over there, I believe, like Independence Day or July 3rd or something, and um, signed for them and spent, and spent two years playing at Arsenal. Danny, uh, what were your plans? I mean, going into that, uh, let's say, weekend where the trials happened, uh, before that, what were your aspirations as a young senior in high school? Did you think that professional football was on the cards, or was it to play in the U.S., maybe going to college football? What, what were your plans going into that uh, time period? Yeah, I mean, I initially, like, I'd always, I mean, since I was a kid, I'd always wanted to become a pro, and it was always my dream to become a pro, but I didn't, I didn't particularly know how, you know, how or when it was going to happen. And, um, you know, when you're turning, you know, 17, going into your senior year in high school, I know it obviously sounds very young, but in the football world, there's, you know, there's guys that are 17, 18 playing regularly in first teams and some of the best first teams in the world. So um, it, not that I was concerned or worried, but I just didn't particularly know when or how it would happen. Um, I was excited to, uh, you know, get the best college scholarship that I, I could at the time. I mean, I was... Um, you know, luckily I was getting recruited by some of the best schools academically in the country, as well as from a soccer standpoint, like, uh, Stanford, Duke, UVA, uh, Harvard, Yale, all these big schools. So it was actually, um, when Arsenal did come in, it was actually quite a, um, an interesting time for me because, you know, as an American growing up, 
um, growing up in the states, you you kind of you follow this this uh, this path of let me go to high school, then I go to college, and then basically life begins. Like I, but those two things for the majority of people are you know that's kind of ingrained in you uh, in school from the very very start. So um, when I got all these amazing opportunities to go to some of the best you know the best institutions in the country academically. Um, it was very difficult to kind of turn those down, obviously. But once again, when Arsenal came in, it was a it was a bit of a once in a lifetime opportunity, and um, I knew I'd been kind of working all my life towards it. So it was a very, I mean, it was you talk about a fork in the road. Like it was, um, you know, one week I went hoping to get a college um, scholarship, and then you know, two weeks later I was on a flight to London, um, you know, training alongside Henri and those guys, as you mentioned. So it was a it was an interesting time for sure. You know, flying to London obviously had a lot of probably misconceptions and stuff of how am I seriously going to play for Arsenal FC? And there has to be some person that has to convince you. So I was assuming like it was probably Arsene Wenger. So what was that first conversation with him like, Danny? Um, yeah, I met I met Wenger. I I suppose probably I think the first day of my trial actually. Um, the chief scout brought me in. Um, well, the chief scout picked me up at the hotel with my dad the night before. We slept and. I was still kind of pinching myself the first night in the hotel, you know, like, as you said, like, you have kind of no idea. There's, there's a lot of, not misconceptions, but there's a lot of, uh, just unknowns for Americans in the, kind of in the English professional footballing, or, you know, what you see on television, uh, every weekend for 90 minutes is, is far different from, you know, the reality of a day-to-day life, um, the day-to-day life of a professional footballer over here. So when I went in, uh, I mean, immediately I was just, uh, overwhelmed by like just all the stuff that happens to make sure that those 11 guys on the field are actually happy and um, able to train at their best on on a daily basis so you know I walked in was sitting in the kind of the reception of the club which is a nice um, like a nice big room where there's you know Henri walked past us and uh, said hi shook, shook my dad's hand shook my hand like smiled and walked in and it was like that was when you kind of realized like holy smokes like this is <laughs> This is actually, you know, this is this is legit. Um, and then when Wenger came in, as I said, Steve Rowley, the chief scout, was with me, and he um, basically called him aside and said, "You know, boss, this is the uh, the American boy that I was talking about uh, that I brought in." And he, as I say, he shook my dad's hand, shook my hand, and said, "I heard a lot of good things. Like, looking forward to this, you know, these couple weeks." So, um, yeah, I mean, it was very short meeting him for the first time, but obviously, uh, pretty powerful. These are guys that you. And at the time as well, now, you know, now you, you feel much closer to everything because of all the coverage in the United States. But then it was like, you know, when Arsenal called, I, the biggest stream of information was probably going to Arsenal.com then. You know, there was no Twitter, there was no, um, there was no Facebook. And it was very, um, you know, that's where you got your information, basically. So um, it was a very different time. So meeting him for the first time, it was obviously a very, very big deal. But I was just, uh, I was pretty overwhelmed by a lot of other things as well fantastic story uh danny i want to take you back a little bit to some to a time which probably wasn't as pleasant uh the injury that you received and how it affected your career how did it feel for such a young player who had risked so much to move to england to play for arsenal to have it cut short and what was going through your mind during the rehab and when was it that you realized that your professional career as a football player would come to an end yeah so i mean it was uh, obviously it was a very um difficult um difficult time for for anybody that you know kind of i mean i wouldn't say i put all my eggs in that basket obviously as i said school was very important to me i i actually finished first in my class in in, in high school and everything so when i say school was important growing up with an iranian father and an italian mother they, they could be pretty strict at times so everything that i did <laughs> i tried to focus on 100 percent um so yeah i mean it, i I'd always dreamed of becoming a footballer. I became, you know, I became a professional footballer. And um, two years, two years into my Arsenal, or I signed a two-year deal at Arsenal. After two years, I, I, I mean, myself and the club quickly realized that my future there was going to be very difficult. So I got released. I mean, Ashley Cole was the starting left back at the time, and Gal Clichy, who was a year younger than I was, uh, and about a million times better than I was, was uh, was second choice as well. And I was behind uh, Clichy, so. Um, it was kind of clear that it would be difficult for me to make it there. So um, when I got released by Arsenal, I, I ended up signing for Burnley, and I went there. And um, yeah, I guess I, into my second year at the club, my um, my knee started uh, kind of bothering me. And at that time, I'd had I'd already had um, 
I'd already had three knee surgeries actually on my right knee and I'd just gone, we'd basically just gone on a run through, through town in Burnley and the kind of the prolonged pounding on my knee just didn't feel right. And after, uh, after training, I had to go like, I don't know, I got ice and the next day it didn't feel right. So I ended up going to get a scan and the doctor, the doctor basically said like, you're, there's nothing actually showing up on the scan. Um, so I was like, oh, that's, that's nice. And he said, but the fact that you're like feeling pain just means your joint is actually like the words he uses, your joints knackered, which essentially means like your joint is finished. Um, and then he said like, I, I, I'd probably recommend hanging up your boots if I were you, if you want to be able to walk when you're 30. So, um, yeah, I mean, it was very, <laughs> I was 22 at the time. So it's very, uh, uh, very powerful words. Uh, and obviously you don't want to believe it either. So, I mean, as a 22 year old kid, you're like, okay, whatever. Like, I'm going to go back to the States, back to, um, doctors that I trust and, you know, get a second opinion and all that. And, um, I, uh, the doctor basically said like, take six weeks, take six weeks and don't do anything. Like you can just go to the gym and work on like upper body stuff, but just take six weeks. And if it doesn't, if it doesn't get back to the way it should be, uh, then I'd start to consider, you know, other things. And, um, so actually I, I got out of my contract with Burnley cause I didn't want to be I didn't want to be injured and not doing anything there for six weeks with such uncertainty. And, uh, I flew back home. Uh, I actually went down to Miami to one of the doctors that did my, um, one of my second, I think my second surgery. And I, I rehabbed in Miami for about six weeks. Uh, my knee got, I mean, it, my quad strengthened, my hamstring strengthened, but my knee didn't particularly get any better. Um, and I was, I was talking to some MLS clubs at the time, like actually maybe potentially going back, um, kind of getting back into MLS and continuing if my knee got better. Um, DC and I were one of the clubs I was speaking to. So I went to see their doctor who I'd actually seen before as well. And, uh, he basically said like, you know, we could operate and get you back and it might be one month or two months or one year or two years before your knee bothers you again and then it'll be the same thing over and over and um after kind of doing that for you know for the past six months I just like I was tired I was frustrated um and I just didn't you know I, did, I didn't want to have to deal with it and just keep kind of like fighting an uphill battle uh one that I knew obviously I wouldn't you know I wouldn't win in the end at all it's not because I didn't think I could do it it's because my body would certainly not let me do it after a certain point of time so um, yeah, it was very, it was very difficult. I had to, uh, I mean, come into the realization and like actually saying, okay, like I'm going to go focus and do something else in my life. Um, you know, during, cause during the rehab time, you're still, there's still that little bit of hope that you wake up one morning and your knees, you know, just feels better again. And you're like, Oh, well, it was just a scare. Like my body healed itself. And, uh, because it didn't do that, um, I just had to, I kind of had to make that hard decision. And, um, yeah, it was, it was tough. I told my parents and then I kind of like, I, I look back at this funny Facebook saves everything, but I wrote like a note on Facebook, I think, and like shared it with my friend saying like, thank you for all the support. But like, I now, I basically announced my retirement on Facebook notes, or something, <laughs> uh, which, um, which now I look back and I read it, as I said, cause Facebook says it saves everything. And, uh, I, I cringe in, uh, in the corniness of it all. But, uh, but yeah, that was, uh, that was basically it. You know, Danny, your um, debut with the first team was something really special for you, Going scoring that goal against Manchester City, and it was your best buddy, I should say, Cesc Fabregas, gave you that assist. Would you just talk about that goal and how that experience was for you, and would you say that Cesc Fabregas was the best player that you played with on the pitch? And also, on a side note, who was the toughest opponent, in your opinion, during this time that you played with Arsenal? Um, yeah, I mean, that, that night was amazing. You know, I, um, I've actually... It's funny, a lot of these... Uh, a lot of these questions that you've asked me, I, I've I've been asked a lot. Like since I moved back um, back home, like what was it like playing with Sask? What was it like, you know, making your debut and all that stuff? And um, and it's it is it is. I mean, it was very interesting. Now I look back and I think, man, I was tw I was twenty years old when that happened, and um, still as a twenty year old, like walking into a dressing room. Um, for, well, I'll, I'll bring you back even further. So the way Arsenal. Um, the way Arsenal arrange like travel for for some away games is you'll train you'll train the day before in the kind of the formation that you'd expect to see um, the next day and then the the subs are kind of still kind of up in the air and then the following day uh, the day that we traveled that night they put a list up of who's traveling to Manchester um, so I walked into the into the dressing room and saw my name on the list uh, which was you know that was the first time I was actually involved with the first team so that was. Uh, pretty amazing and obviously my last name is pretty long so it was it was easy to see that I was <laughs> included in the team um so we um we 
then we go to the airport. We flew up. Uh, we flew up to Manchester, which is a pretty short flight from London. Spent all day in the hotel, um, and then took the coach to what is now, you know, the Etihad. And um, yeah, walking in once again, I said, walking into the dressing room and seeing your name on the back of a shirt, you know, that you didn't actually buy from like Eurosport or something, was uh, is, is is quite a nice <laughs> feeling. And um, it was yeah, it was it was just cool. You know, I was. The, not saying that that would have been enough because I am a very motivated person, but honestly, like, you know, if that had been my night, I still would have been an extremely happy person. Just, you know, being involved in Arsenal's first team was, uh, was, was a huge honor regardless. And then when, um, during, during the game, um, a lot of guys actually made their debut last, that night. Uh, Robin Van Persie made his debut. He actually scored his first Arsenal goal that night. And Manuel Munia made his debut. Sesc had already played a couple times in the first team, but he was still kind of, you know, he was still like a, a very young Sesc. So um, he was involved that night. Matthew Flamini was involved that night. Sebastian Larson, who's now at Sunderland. Um, so, yeah, like a lot of um, a lot of guys were either making their debut or getting one of their first games in that night. And uh, we were playing a, a Manchester City team that would, I wouldn't say that, I mean, they may have been, they weren't struggling in the league, but they weren't doing particularly well. And um, we, we ended up getting a goal, I believe, in the second half first. So we were winning 1-0 in the second half. Uh, I came on as a sub in the 80, uh, 82nd minute. Um, and I I ended up scoring in the 90, I think the 92nd minute, I believe. Um, as you mentioned, Sesk played me a ball in behind. Danny Mills, who, you know, I... I grew up watching this guy on television play in the World Cup, play for England, play for Manchester City. You know, when I went on, he was marking me. Um, so it was like once again, you're like, wow, this is a very, uh, this is a very cool situation. <laughs> um, and then you realize very quickly when he like knocked the crap out of me that like he doesn't care that I like look up to him or any of that. <laughs> so, um, so like quickly realize that you're kind of in the thick of it. The game was on television too. You know, it's a night game, so um, it was a very like exciting you know atmosphere when. When Sesk played me that ball through, um, yeah, I took a touch and I, I mean, I was, I, I went over to England as a striker. So uh, for me, my first instinct, especially when I was in the box, was always, you know, see where I was and if I could score, I'd shoot for sure. Um, so I took a touch and I happened to cut out Mills with my first touch and then uh, Van, per- I really should have passed it to Van Persie. Like when I watch it back again, I'm like, as, as, as on the other side of the game now, as a scout, I would have criticized myself for not actually passing the ball. Um, but hey, you know, he'd already scored his first goal. He'd already made his debut. I said, why not? So I took a shot and I scored. Um, ran around like a chicken with my head cut off, like an idiot. Uh, and then they actually ended up scoring right off the, basically immediately off the kickoff. Like that, we conceded a free kick, and Robbie Fowler scored a free kick uh, right outside the box. A really nice effort that went into the top corner and we ended up winning 2-1 so um so yeah it was a it was a pretty memorable night as I said like walking into the dressing room and seeing my name on the back of the shirt was you know was one thing and then actually getting to come on and make my debut for Arsenal um was another thing and then actually getting to score the goal was like it was just like the icing you know cherry on cherry on top of the cake basically so it was a it was a it was a very nice night this concluded our first part of our interview with Danny Carbocion. The next part will be about him discussing about his career as a scout for Arsenal FC.